Before we get started, I want to thank you for listening and have a personal favor to ask. Please push that subscriber button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. This will ensure the future of this channel and help us help you discover the world of collectability. So if you love all things Patek Philippe, push that button now and also comment below after you watch this video. In fact, if you comment, you'll be entered into a drawing to win one of the coveted collectability caps and we'll have a drawing for each video that we share. So let's now get started for today. We are going to discuss the reference 3796. So here we have four reference 3796s, and this is a dream collection of the reference. This is a box set that we assembled for the ultimate reference 3796 collection. So what makes the 3796 so interesting? It seemingly is a simple classic watch, but it's quite important in the world of Patek Philippe. So it's 31 millimeters in diameter, which is the, the perfect size. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. 31 millimeters is becoming the new 38 millimeters. It's becoming like the classic conservative size to wear today. But this is a watch that's only seven millimeters thick. And at 31 millimeters, it tells a very important story. So let's discuss that value proposition in each of these specific watches. First, let's look at the history of it. The reference 3796 was made from 1982 until just about 2000 when it was discontinued. It was identical aesthetically from the classic reference 96 that was around since the 1930s. The main difference between these references is that the 3796 has a sapphire crystal and the fact that it contains the modern caliber 215 PS. The PS stands for petite seconds in French or small seconds. So the first reference 3976 was made in yellow gold in 1982. It took another three years until we saw the other colors in rose, white, and platinum. I wanted to show you this catalog from the 1980s, which shows what the original reference 3796 looks like. I mean, you couldn't tell the difference from a 96. And next to it, we have a reference 3796 DJ, and we're going to go get into that in just a moment. Going back to the 1980s catalog, it's fun to note the price difference between the 3796, the regular with the batons, and the 3796 DJ. The D is for the decoratif or the, or the bezel, and we're gonna look at one of those in a moment. And you'll also notice the, uh, the DJ has Roman numerals as opposed to the classic batons. Now there was a $100 price difference in retail between the 3796 and the 3796 DJ. So it's fun to imagine that an extra $100 made all the difference so that you could get that decorated hobnail bezel. So with all of these, the cases were made by Atelier Rayoni in Geneva, and uh, this is now the building where the Patek Philippe Museum is um, seen. And uh, the platinum cases were interestingly made by uh, Fab Ferre and Chaux de Fond, which is an interesting little nuance in the history of 3796. So let's look at this yellow gold DJ uh, to begin. So this particular example, as I discussed, has that uh, decorated bezel. And uh, that hobnail pattern is quintessential Patek Philippe, and it's, uh, it's fun to see it on the reference 3796. And combined with the Roman numerals, this is the classic 80s aesthetic that uh, we saw in 1985 with the, the launch of the uh, 3919. So this first example in this set of the 3796s is uh, quite exciting, having that uh, decorated bezel. And you can see the size at 31 millimeters really works. You could wear it with a suit, you could wear it uh, casually, and it just feels great on the wrist for, for a man or a woman. Now, as we assembled this dream collection of 3796, we had to have a pink on pink, and that is the rose gold 3796 with the rose dial. Just look at the aesthetic and how that sparkles on the wrist. It is understated, it's classic, it has that vintage look, and uh, this is one of my favorites of the collection. Uh, to have a, a pink and pink 3796 is a classic. 
Now there's something I'd like to show you with all of these 3796s, and, and that is what you see underneath the subseconds. This is the O Swiss O, which is a great tell that you know it's not a reference 96. So you'll see that because that represents the Aprior, which was used from 1971 to 1995. And this is a really useful tip in your collecting journey. You need to know that the Aprior uh, or Sigma dial represents that this has gold that was used in the production of the dial during that time period. So that's going to help you date the watches and, and also ascertain originality. Now let's look at this. 3796 in platinum. You need a forklift to pick it up. It's so heavy. For such a, a size watch, it has, has a lot of weight. So the, the 3796 in platinum has that, the classic uh, stick dial is absolutely beautiful. And this is quite rare because most 3976 in platinum were born with diamond dials. And this one was born with the batons as confirmed by the extract from the archives that's right next to me. Now next, I'd like to present to you a very special piece. And this is only the second time I've come across one in my collecting lifetime. And that is a reference 3796 SG. The S stands for the sapphire back and the back of the watch. So you could actually see the movement. The G stands for white gold. And the salmon dial is what completely differentiates this watch from the others in the collection. So this 3796 is, uh, is quite special for a number of reasons because number one, it's rarity. These were made for the Japanese market in 1996. It is said that only a hundred examples of these were made, but it's quite possible that less were actually sold because only four have surfaced to date. Now, I wanted to show you the back of this watch. Now look, at the sapphire display back. So this is what makes this so interesting. With the other examples, for a point of comparison, with the platinum, you have a solid back. And here with this white gold example, you have a sapphire display back. And uh, the Japanese market was, um, at that time, ahead of the curve, wanting to look at the movements. They wanted to see what makes this watch tick and what makes it special. They wanted to see the 215 PS in all its glory. And to have a Sapphire display back in the 1990s is just a, a wonderful thing for a watch this size. It's just an absolutely beautiful movement uh, to see with your eyes and uh, such a rarity to have with a 3796. Speaking of rarity, let's look at the paperwork that came with the 3796. And if you haven't seen Japanese papers before, you are in for a treat. So here we have uh, the full set of papers with the instruction manual, and we have the original certificate of origin. And one thing that's really fun to see is that little APSR. Now that is a date code. Please check out our article, The Secret Codes of Patek Philippe, to learn about the date codes used on Patek Philippe certificates of origin. And you'll see from the chart, this indicates this was made in 01 of 96. So January of 96 is when this, this watch was originally sold. You'll also see on this um, uh, certificate of origin, the, uh, the S for the sapphire back, and the confirmation was born in uh, white gold and also with the rose dial. So we only know three, possibly four examples with, with this one before me that exist today. Probably more were made. And according to John Nagayama of On Behalf in Japan, who is the worldwide expert in 96 and 37 96s, there were a hundred of these made for the Japanese market at that time period. So I wanted to show you this, this beautiful Patek Philippe branded vinyl folder um, that goes alongside the reference 3796 for this, uh, this mint and complete example of this coveted reference. So altogether, we have an extraordinary collection of very rare examples of the reference 3796. We will offer the four of these as a collection, uh, including this incredible period box and slipcase that's made especially for four 1990s Patek Philippe watches. We'll offer this all together for one week if you're interested in buying the whole collection. 
So act now if you'd like to have this ready-to-wear collection, a bit of history, in your personal collection because it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to have all four of these together. If it doesn't sell as a collection, then we're going to break them up and sell them up individually. But uh, you have one week to buy the whole collection if you're interested. And please DM either me or Kelly Yak if you are interested. So I want to thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to Collectability on YouTube, Instagram, and also TikTok so that you don't miss any future posts. Thank you again and enjoy the hunt. Thank you.